And we are back. Cheers, Rio. This is five things that we learn in the Premier League this weekend. And what a week again it has been. There's been some wonderful football played this week, some breathtaking football played some this week. And maybe there were some surprises. Maybe there wasn't, as Arsenal yet again disappointed. But we'll talk about them a little bit later. First things first, then, in at number one, Everton slip up again. In the first month or so of the season, Everton under Ancelotti, their new signings firing. They look like a team that genuinely could start to finish inside the top four. Who's going to miss out? Whose place are they going to take? Look at the football they're playing. Well, that flame now seems to have properly burnt out as Everton have slipped back to their usual position in the table. Everton had a relatively simple, straightforward weekend. They had to go to Turf Moor to face off 19th place Burnley. And come away with the three points. They're certainly capable of doing that. They've certainly got the talent, the personnel, the form, you would assume, to do that. But they came away with a one-all draw. Now, one standout thing for Everton, and one thing that they maybe can be pleased about, despite the result, is that Dominic Calvert-Lewin's form doesn't look like it was a blip. It looks like this is a player that has now hit a stage in his career where he can be relied upon to be a regular, consistent goal scorer for, for them and, and maybe even for England as well. Calvert-Lewin scored his 11th goal of the season to take him up to 11 goals and keep him ahead of the pack, which is led by Human Son, who is on 10. But Everton's form has to be a worry, as a team that is. Since the 2-2 draw back in the Merseyside derby, six games have passed and Everton have won only one and they've lost four out of those six. That's worrying form for a team that started the season so brightly. And that form has seen them slip all the way down to ninth in a table, not somewhere that you would have thought they would be after that opening month and that great opening month that they had. Everton now need to turn this around if they're going to be taken seriously or if they're going to push for those European spots. Otherwise, they're going to end up with another disappointing season. In the number two, subs inspire United. Now, this one is obviously closer to my heart, but as we saw, the subs inspired Manchester United's comeback, and I imagine what a game that must have been for the neutrals. 3-1 winners at the London Stadium after the substitutes came on and absolutely shredded that West Ham defence. United went into the break with a very, very disappointing, dismal first-half performance. But the substitutions of Juan Mata, uh, Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford in the second half literally transpired to Manchester United, not only scoring goals, but also taking a grip of the game, creating chances and looking absolutely lethal on the counter. Manchester United go to a hard place. West Ham down the years, Man United have dropped points in big games down there, always made it difficult. But what they weren't there this year was 30 plus thousand fans screaming pushing that West Ham team on. They started unbelievably. They, they made Man United, I think, in the first half look very average. Um, but second half, the substitutes. The substitutes changed everything. The quality of the players brought on the pitch. Bruno Fernandes gets more assists in this game, in this one half of football, than any players had over 90 minutes this season in the Premier League. That tells you everything. He, the importance that he has in his team, the value, chances created and goals scored more than anyone since he's been at Manchester United. Anyone in the Premier League, no one's been involved in more goals than him or, ch or chances created. He's been fantastic. What a huge, huge player. Are they ever reliant on him? Maybe at the moment, but they're getting the results in the end. Nine away wins out of nine, I think it is. Um, but, and they've gone behind, I think, in, in five of them games this season, um, which doesn't bode well. They've got to get that right. But listen, the substitutes that came on, Rashford, man, think at the end, beautiful, but he was running in behind. Pogba, I have to give special mention to Pogba, free Pogba, please. The guy comes in, produces a very good performance, um, looked like something of the Pogba that we're accustomed to seeing when he was in a Juve shirt or when he plays for, for France, and we've seen sporadically over his career at Manchester United. That's what you want to see consistently. That's what I want to see week in, week out with Pogba. Fernandez teed up Paul Pogba for an absolutely sensational finish before Juan Mata's brilliant chip over the top let Marcus Rashford through one-on-one -on -one with a goalkeeper and Marcus wasn't missing from that sort of distance. Add that to a wonderful bit of movement and finish from Mason Greenwood and those three points was enough to see Manchester United move up to fourth in the table. Macy! Uh, Mason Greenwood is the governor. He's going to be the man. I know I keep hyping him up. I don't care. Because I believe he has the talent to come through and absolutely dominate. Be the number nine at Man United in years to come. And England. Trust me. I'm going with it. I'm going all in. I've done it before. I've gone all in before. We all know what happened there. I'm doing it again. Mason Greenwood will dominate the Premier League for years to come as a number nine. 
at the final whistle, United were only two points off the summit. Now, we've got that game in hand, and I think it'd be wrong to start counting that game in hand as three points. But if it's an away one, then the odds have to be in United favour. United have now won every single league game away from home this season, and they've done so by going behind first to do so. We are anything but boring. And when you add this to the fact that it's now nine consecutive away wins for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's side, if United can start to turn around their home form, there's no reason that this side cannot maintain its position in and around the top and potentially even push for a title. But they're going to need a lot of luck. Number three, Lampard betters Bielsa. Couple of years on from the famous Spygate incident, which saw Bielsa spying on Frank Lampard's derby counter, the two face off again, and it was no surprise all eyes was on this tie this weekend. Despite the early scare after another Patrick Bamford goal for Leeds, it was the sort of game where Chelsea shown their title credentials. Ugh. They came back. It finished 3-1, and in doing so, they, they didn't just look good. They looked in control. They looked comfortable. They looked like the sort of side that could go on and actually clinch a title this season. Well, what can I say? Chelsea are on absolute fire. They're flying. Frank Lampard has got his team confident. Go a goal down, not a problem. We're confident. And who is at the base of that, the foundations of that, for me, would have to be the man, Thiago Silva. Come in, the experience... He's played in big games all around the world. And I think they got a goal down or things ain't really ticking for him, but he sits there at the back. Everyone looks to him for that inspiration. What's going on, Thiago? Yeah, I'm cool. Just keep going. And we haven't even seen the best of Werner. We haven't even seen the best of Havertz yet. Zayat. Pulisic has just come back. He looked amazing when he came on. These boys, this and Chelsea, I think they're in it. They're in it for the long run. They're going to be there at the end. And as they have done all season, Bielsa's side put on another respectable showing despite going down 3-1. Giroud was on fire. He became the first Chelsea player scoring six consecutive Premier League starts since Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank all the way back in 2001. Saturday night was also the first time an English manager has ended the day on the top of the Premier League since Mike Phelan all the way back in August 2016 with Hull. Frank Lampard is also the first Englishman to lead Chelsea to the top of the top flight since Bobby Campbell in 1989. So it was a good weekend for old Frankie boy this weekend. Number four, North London is white. Arsenal's miserable 2021 season continued as they ran out 2-0 losers in the North London derby as Jose Mourinho does what Jose Mourinho does best. By the way, I've got a question for you. Is Son the best Asian player to come to the Premier League. Now listen, I played with a great and more of a, a player's player, but an absolute top player, top professional in Jisung Park, um, but very different. Uh, Jisung Park, you want him in your team. I remember your man Mark Perlow out of a game once. Perlow was waking up in the middle of the night. G was at the bottom of the bed waiting for him, giving him nightmares. But son, man, if there's a player I could take now just that was I feel is gettable, he'd be up there with one of them, one of my first picks. Definitely my top three. I love the way he plays. He's direct. He hurts teams. He wants to score all the time. Can go off both feet. Looks like a fantastic lad as well. So who is the best Asian player to play in the Premier League, guys? World-class duo Human Son and Harry Kane combined to get the three points over to the white side of North London. But again, it was another Jose Mourinho-esque performance. They did what they had to do and they shut up shop and denied, albeit not the greatest Arsenal attack the world's ever seen from scoring a single goal and taking all of their points. Arsenal have now lost six of their 11 league games this season, scoring only 10 goals and only the bottom three have scored less. They are genuinely in relegation form and if Brighton manage to pick up a win, then they are definitely getting dragged into what could be a relegation battle. Just a quick one, guys. Um, Joe, you, you, you cool? Where are you, bruv? Are you, you alright? Piers? Mr. Piers Morgan? Where are you? Is it that time? Tears for Piers? <laughs> Now, I don't think Arsenal are in danger of getting relegated, but the fact remains that if they continue to keep losing and the teams around them start picking up points, they will literally be in the relegation spots before too long. They've 
been beaten in five of their last seven Premier League games, drawing once, and it looks like the fans are now beginning to turn on Mikel Arteta, who, but a few months ago, was the greatest thing since sliced bread. If Brighton beat Southampton tonight, Arteta's side will be in 16th place after 11 games, and it's very fortunate that the bottom three have been as bad as they have been and just haven't been picking up points, or they could easily find themselves in the bottom three. Does it mean that Jose Mourinho's side are title contenders? I think with Chelsea and actually even Manchester United looking like they can be a bit formidable, there's a few clubs in the mix now, including Liverpool, who put on a fantastic performance, and we'll talk to them again in a second. There's a couple of teams that could lay claim to being in a title fight this season. Guys, this week, I'm thinking we have a title race. It's on. North London is Jose Mourinho's, I'm being told right now. 2-0. Spurs are looking like the real deal. They're looking like a team that are going to be there for the long haul, mate. So they're solid. They're, they look hard to play against like the old Jose teams used to be. And Jose's telling people now, I'm back. I'm back. You all thought I was gone. You all thought I hit a bit of a barren spell, which he did. But he's revamped, man. He's coming back and he's showing people that, listen, the old Jose is still there. And with the inconsistencies of Man City and the less than dominant than last season, which was just out of this world with ridiculous, Liverpool, um, we can fight. And Spurs are really, I think, with the... Listen, Harry Kane and Son just feeding each other the way they are. They're hard to play. And Gareth Bale hasn't even hit the ground running yet. Once he comes into the fray, woof, uh, they're going to be... They're tough to play against now, mate. But listen, they're, I think they're a top team... And Jose Mourinho has told Arsenal, you've got some work to do to get to our level at the moment, at this given time. So Arsenal, Arsenal fans, always got a lot to say. To be fair to them, win or lose, they've got a lot to say. And right now, things ain't looking rosy. I don't often claim to speak for everyone. In fact, I usually go out of my way to say that I don't speak for everyone. But I think one thing that most Premier League fans can certainly agree on is that the, re the reintroduction of fans into stadiums has been a largely good thing. And there was 2,000 Liverpool fans on the cop this weekend watching the champions for the first time as they put four goals past Wolves at Anfield on Sunday night. Fans are back in the place. Liverpool entertain the fans 4-0 against a very, very good Wolves team. Wow, listen, as much as Liverpool have injuries, three out of their first choice back three are out injured, these boys are making it look easy like there's nothing wrong. So for everybody else, for me, that worries me if I'm another team in the vying for the league. I think Liverpool, they've got a fantastic midfield and forward line, but the boys who have come in and stepped in for the injured players are producing the, producing the goods and it's, it's great to see Matip scores. He's one of the ones that's come in. Um, Wijnaldum, who I spoke about last week, I think he's an integral player now, given the injuries they've got. And I can't understand how they've not got him tied down to a new deal, because I think he plays any one of the three midfield positions. He can play the holding midfielder, he can play the eight box-to-box -box player, and he can play the ten, which he does great for, for Holland. So, huge player. Um, fans back, Klopp gives them a little bit of emotion, giving it to him after the game. Great to see, love it. Liverpool. Listen, if their injuries are like they are and they're still within six, seven points at the turn of the year, can't bet on anyone else to win the league. Mo Salah in particular looked in fine form as he helped Liverpool draw level with Tottenham at the top of the table as they continued this incredible, and it frankly is absolutely incredible, run of home form. They have now won 31 of their last 32 home games, drawing one, scoring 93 goals and conceding just 25. Klopp's squad might be suffering heavily with injuries at the moment, but they don't seem to be slowing down too much. A little bit of a road bump, but they don't seem to be slowing down too much. And this is a very good win and a very big win for them this weekend. That's it for us for this week. That was the five things that we learned. Um, I think there's a genuine title challenge starting to emerge from other teams as well as Liverpool who do look like they could easily hold on to their crown for this season. Let me know in the comments below who do you think is going to be the one that emerges. Is it Chelsea? Could it be Mourinho's Tottenham? Or could it be Manchester United under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next one. Laters.